Welcome everybody to another edition of the Soccer Report podcast. I'm your host Dante Di Tomasis. Before I introduce my very, very special guest to my left, I'd like to thank our sponsors for the show, Cataldi Fresh Market. Check them out at Islington and Highway 7. They make the best pastries, have a phenomenal hot table, and of course, Nine Round Fitness. For you, a fantastic workout. Go get them, go check out Louie. He's got all the stuff for you and for all your fitness needs before Christmas. And now, finally, to our guest. He is the Golden Boot winner. He is the U21 Player of the Year and the MVP of the Canadian Premiership League. As Gareth Wheeler on One Soccer says, it's gorgeous, it's Tristan Borges. Tristan, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Oh, did you like my intro? Yeah, I did. That was, that was pretty good, that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, so Tristan, before we start off, I just want to ask you a simple question, you know. First season in the CPL, how did you find it? I think it was amazing. I think it was amazing. I think uh, as a player standpoint for us, we kind of knew the quality already from the players and, you know, the coaching staff from uh, around the league, right? But I think a lot of people not knowing what this league was going to come about in terms of fans and stuff like that, I think it was positive this year. And I hope everybody agrees with me on that. Obviously, there's going to be some people that disagree, but for the most part of it, I think it was amazing. It was an amazing year as a player to be a part of it. And it's definitely something I'm going to be remembering because, you know, it's I'm part of history, right? So. I think it was a successful year for the CPL for sure. Absolutely, you're the first MVP of the league, and uh, you know more MVPs to come, and you have a very bright future. Uh, another question here, you know, I'm I'm sure this probably you're probably wondering what happened at this moment. This is the final of the CPL, first leg. You get the red card. What's going through your head? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the moment, I think people saw, also saw when they were watching the game was uh, I was a little bit shocked, right? Um, just throughout the whole game and kind of the rivalry that we have against them, you know, it's an aggressive game, right? And uh, obviously, in the moment, I was just trying to get out of this situation. And, uh, you know, obviously, I was a little bit heated, especially right after. And, and then I kind of thought about it. I can kind of understand a little bit on how the ref would call something like that. You know, it was quick and, you know, he did a very good job uh, acting on that one. Oh, yeah. But uh, to be honest with you, I think, you know, after the fact is, uh, as long as, you know, they overturned it, because, you know, I, they were, I didn't really do anything and the video shows that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm just happy that they overturned it and I was able to play one more game with my teammates. Yeah, no, we were we were grateful too, because, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I couldn't see a final without Tristan Borges, to be honest. I just couldn't. He's just such a special player, and uh, the league the league deserves to see that. So, Tristan, what's it like playing with guys like Kyle Becker? You know, especially Nanko up top. Uh, what what's that group? How's the chemistry looking? Uh, I think, to be honest with you, that's actually a big part of why we were so successful this year. You know, I think a lot of us had a great bond. Most on, I mean, most better than most of the teams in the in the in the CPL. Obviously, there was a few teams that still had players from their youth systems, and you can obviously see the 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 chemistry uh, Calvary had, and look how well they did, right? But I think just having players that you know are more a little more experienced, you you, you learn off of them, right? And obviously, Becker was a uh, I would say a big part as an individual for my success. You know, he really mentored me this whole year on and off the field, which is, you know, someone at my age, that's something that you really need, right? You always need a, a player that can help guide you in tough situations, right? So I think just the most important was just playing with players like that makes it easy for myself. You know, a lot of people tell me about the MVP and things like that, but, you know, I owe most, basically all the success to them, right? Because my teammates are the ones that put me in great positions to score and I just finish as much as I can. But, I mean, just to play with players like them, you know, even Kwame, you know, players that just have professional experience and they know what it is to be in a professional environment, it just makes it easy for yourself. Yep, and speaking of professionals, um, I got to say that, there's another league that you guys had a fantastic run in, and that's the CONCACAF yeah. League. Uh, you know, that I was at that game on the Thursday night there against Olympia, and you guys had a phenomenal game. You were so organized defensively. Yeah. You know, you took your chance as well. How was it like in that environment when you went to Honduras? Uh, I mean, for me individually, I've been there already a, a few times with the with the with the youth of the national team, of, uh, you know, U17 and U20. But even still playing then, it was because most of the times I went, it was always against national team programs, right? So going against a club team, it was a different, it was a different uh, battle. But I think you know, just for us, a lot of the players being their first year in a professional environment, I think mm -hmm. we did well for ourselves. You Absolutely. know, getting past yep. getting past that first round and. I think, you know, just us showing what we're capable of doing at home, both games, we won both games at home. That just yeah. shows, you know, we're very comfortable. 
playing in uh, in front of the fans that we have, and obviously it was very difficult to go and play there. They're a high quality team, and and um, I think you know just just knowing what we did this year already is just, it's big for us next year, right? Going into next year, we know that we're we're already automatically qualified for it, right? So we're we're going to be prepared for it. But I think that now that everybody has more experience uh, on it and we see how it is to play in countries like that, it's difficult. But I think this was a, it was a big step for not only future for our club but for CPL, right? So. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it was nothing but positive this year. Yeah, absolutely. For Canadian soccer, guys, this is an unbelievable achievement for a CPL team to make it all the way to the round of 16. And you know what? I know this team could easily go to the quarter, semifinals. Heck, let's take it all, man. Because once, once we, we get on that map, which we already are, it's going to slowly get better and better and better. And we need everyone to come out and support the CPL as much as possible. So I also want to talk about Chris. Uh, Tristan, Coach Bobby, he's been an unbelievable success, I, I truly believe, and he's watched you guys grow through Sigma, and just his development, T take us through how uh, Coach Bobby uh, co coaches you guys and how what he expects from you guys. Uh, I think, you know, for, for most of the guys on the team, they have they have a little bit more experience with him than me, right? I've only known him maybe for about a year and a half. I've always known of him for quite a while because of Sigma, but just on a personal level of playing with him, you know, it's, it's a little bit more shorter than other players, but if I can see, you know, the type of relationship I have with him and how well I've been doing underneath him for a short period of time, I can only imagine, you know, for all the guys that have been with him for a long time, right? But I think just us having a coach like that, him having a good understanding of us, right, uh, knowing us for for quite a while. It really helped us this year and kind of gave us a little bit more of an edge against the other teams. You know, it's obviously a lot of teams did well this year, but I think it was kind of when it, when it came down to the important games and important situations, you can see that the gel we had, not only as players together, but with the coach, making the right decisions with the, the starting 11 and having confidence in, in a lot of the players. I think that really helped us, you know, last the whole season. And I think that's why we still had a lot of, a lot of energy towards the end. And, you know, we played well towards the end. And I think a lot of it, really goes to coach Bobby you know uh, he made a lot of good decisions throughout the whole year you know with the switch of the rotation and mm -hmm. trusting a lot of guys I think I think in my opinion I think in terms of a whole a whole team I think we were the best team in the league yeah. right and I, like I, I said it, it definitely goes down to the coaching staff right picking the players using them in certain situations because you can not only see that I think every single player on our team had an impact whether it was a goal yeah. assist a great game like whatever it was right I think I think it really goes down to coaching. Obviously, you know, the players play well, but at the end of the day, you know, if you don't have a coach that, number one, believes in you and that you don't believe in him, it's the work's never going to go through, right? So I think, you know, the, the the chance of us winning was high since the beginning. We knew what we were capable exactly. of doing, right? But I think it was nice to win the championship to show, you know, <laughs> and to kind of give Bobby what, you know, he deserves. Exactly. No, I got I got to I gotta tell you as well, um, switching from the attacking yeah. side to the defending side, I, I just found that you're, you you guys were the most organized mm. team defensively, whether it was through uh, Edgar or, yeah, yeah. and Johnny Grant, I think, had a fantastic yeah. season as well. Uh, keep in mind, too, that even in the final, right, when you shut down Calvary, yeah. right, that, that's no not... No zero goals yeah, in three that, games. Exactly. Yeah, that's that, that's very impressive, guys, and just a, a testament of what, you know, how good yeah. Forge is and how organized they are as a, a team and a club. So Tristan, I gotta ask you, you're the MVP of the league, you got the golden boot, you're the U21 player of the year, uh, I think some other teams might be looking at you. <laughs> what, what's the future, man? I mean, you know, <laughs> I, uh, most, most people that have kind of been in my journey, they know that you know, I was always a person that always not stressed too much about a lot of things, but tried to control things that weren't in my control, right? And, yeah. you know, taking that step back and coming back for a year, that was uh, one thing that I really wanted to focus on and to try to just go day by day and not think too ahead, right? And I think at this point, you know, I did as much as I could for the season. And, you know, that's the, the off-field stuff is kind of more for, you know, uh, my agency to kind of take care of. But for me, it's just kind of recovering for the season that I just had. It was... It wasn't, it wasn't that long of a season, but it was quite a few games, right? And I, I was dealing with a lot of injuries on and off. So for me, it's just kind of focusing on trying to get back to being healthy and just getting excited uh, for, for next season. You know, there's a bright future, not only just for myself, but for Canada, yep. right? So, I mean, you know, whatever happens, happens. But for me, I'm just trying to still focus on recovering my body right now. But how, yeah. How do you, uh, how do you deal with the, the injuries in terms of like, as a professional athlete, is it, 
Like, how do you deal it from a day-to-day basis? I mean, that's that's definitely one thing that not a lot of people really realize that professionals have to, you know, professional athletes have to deal with, right? Like, obviously, you know, it's a, it's it's the best lifestyle that you can you can have, but it's a lot of it's it's a really hard mental game to, mm-hmm. to conquer, right? It's you go through a lot of injuries. Obviously, some players more than others, but to bounce back from injuries as best as you can, you got to be taking care of your body, you know, every single day and. Throughout the year, you know, it, it was it was kind of a joke that I would say with my teammates, but at the end of the day, it's a fact. There really are no days off, yep. right? Like, there, even if you have a day off and you're not going into training, you still got to take care of your body, right? Because you might not take care of your body as much as you think, but you're trying to perform at 100% every yep. single game, every single training, right? And you can't get too down on yourself if you get injured because, you know, that happens in, in the life of an athlete. And we exactly. got a lot of players on the team that went through it, like, I give a lot of credit also to my teammate Jonathan Grant. You know, he's been, he dealt with quite a few injuries, but yeah, you know, exactly. he came back very strong. Hamstring, he played very yeah. good, right? So I think that's just that that just shows the character you have and you know how strong your mentality is. But for me, you know, being a professional athlete, it's not just a half day, you know, thing. It's twenty four exactly. seven. You gotta you gotta dedicate your whole life to it. So yeah. I just try to stay focused as much as I can. Yep. For all you kids out there yeah. that, you know, you wanna be a professional soccer player. Take this advice and take it well. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I was gonna, I was gonna say as well in, in terms of, in terms of the future of Canadian soccer. You know, we as our national team unfolds, could we see Tristan Borges as maybe one of your goals, being on the Canadian national team and starting for us? For sure, for sure, for sure. I right? like. Obviously, you know, that's that's been a goal ever since I started playing soccer, right? If you can represent the country that you grew up playing in, it's it's an honor, right? And, you know, I've already been fortunate enough to, to represent at the U17 and U20, and obviously that's a goal for myself. Now it's a little bit more off-season, so I can talk about it a little bit more, but during the season, my aim focus was just the forwards, right? And mm-hmm. you can ask any player, you get a call-up to the national team, uh, that you're ecstatic for that, you're happy for that, right? Mm-hmm. That's definitely a, a goal on my list that I want to check off, right? And I'm, and I'm pushing towards it, whether it's the U23 Olympic team or the men's national team, right? Yeah. You, know, you you got to go step by step, but... Now it's a little more off season. I can think about it a little bit more, and you know, hopefully, I get the call. And it's definitely going to be honor if I do. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I hope to see you on there, and I hope to Me see too. many CPL players because I know the growth of this league is only getting started. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to play with a few players mm-hmm. in the CPL as well. And and it's very, you know, it's important. It's yeah. important. It's important. It's what's the, what's the mindset? heading into next season now that you guys you know you're the champs you know first yeah. season under your belt you got a lot of experience what, what's the mindset heading into? I think you know this is kind of a question that not only me but you know coach Bobby probably a lot of the players are getting right and it's you know a lot of people are saying okay you know what else could you do next season you know as an individual and as, yeah. as a team but Literally, yeah. the way I look at it and I know my teammates are and I know our whole organization is it's more towards like you know you win a championship that just shows that next year you could do it again Right, and that's that's definitely our mentality. We had it at the beginning of this season. We knew we were capable of doing, and we ended up doing it. Right, so but we just know that there's more that we can give, and if we can give more, why not can we win another championship? And that's definitely our goal. Obviously, there might be a few changes. New players come in, right, and we're just excited. But we know that the bond that we had this year, we can just do it again next year, right? And that's, I think that's more of the mentality going in is just to win another championship, just like it is. And I think another big thing is also to try to go as far as we can in confidence, right? Not only you know, because it's the beginning, I think, of this league, not only you can't really look at it as, as an individual, you got to look at it as a whole team and as a whole league, right? Like, mm-hmm. obviously, we want to win the league, but if, you know, we, we do very well and we represent the CPL and CONCACAF as well as we can, it, it makes it huge not only for our organization, but as players, right? More exposure, and it's just it's just a positive thing all around. So I think just the goals going into this year, it's, it's definitely the same as last year, right? You know, winning winning the championship, trying to go as far and maybe do better in the, uh, in the Canadian championship better than we did last year. But I mean, it's it's definitely an exciting year to look forward to. Yep. Tristan, I'd like to thank you for thank having, you. you know, for you coming on the show and being a part of this. And, you know, to have the first MVP of the league in CPL history, uh, I don't know if that's hit your mind yet, but... You know, it, it, in 30 years from now, you know, I could see as long as this league continues, yeah. you know, making that history and having that whole stone, it's, yeah. it's pretty impressive. It we, we love to, we uh, can't thank you enough for coming thank on the you. show. And we also like to thank our sponsors, Cataldi Fresh Market. Make sure to check them out. And of course, Nine Rounds uh, Fitness for Louis.
and um, have a good one, guys.